Sunny. Sunny. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 565. It's Veterans Day. Thank you so much for joining me. The title of our show is going to be Partial Dentures or Complete Dentures. That's the question. And the reason it came up is because it is Veterans Day. And on um, Friday, I think it was, I saw this gentleman. He, uh, we took out 29 teeth. And we, did, um, uh, we made him complete dentures, immediate dentures. And I realized that he was a veteran. And it struck me and it, and it kind of reminded me that we wind up doing this for a lot of veterans, a lot of uh, former military folks, and so I thought we'd talk a little bit more about the challenges, what we do, why we do it, when we would do one over the other, and the sort of thing that maybe we could uh, talk about to maybe prevent this, and even uh, some options that wouldn't include a uh, full denture. Okay, but before we do, a little history lesson, if you will. Uh, this is an article by Victor David Hansen. It's called The Eleventh Hour of the Eleventh Day of the Eleventh Month, 100 Years Ago. The First World War ended 100 years ago, November 11, 1918, at 11 a.m. Nearly 20 million people had perished since the war began on July 28, 1914, so four years earlier, 20 million people died in that time frame. In early 1918, it looked as if the Central Powers, Austria, Hungary, Germany, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire, would win. Tsarist Russia gave up in December of 1917. Tens of thousands of German and Austrian soldiers were freed to redeploy to the Western Front and finish off the exhausted French and British armies. The late entering United States did not declare war on Germany and Austria, Hungary, until 18, no, I'm sorry, April of 1917. Six months later, America had not begun to deploy troops in any great number. Then suddenly everything changed. By the summer of 1918, hordes of American soldiers began arriving in France in unimaginable numbers of up to 10,000. They were called doughboys a day. Anglo-American convoys began devastating German submarines. The German High Command's tactical blunder stalled the German offensive of spring 1918, the last chance before growing Allied numbers overran German lines. Nonetheless, World War I strangely ended with an armistice, which, by the way, is what Veterans Day used to be called, Armistice Day, maybe it still is, with German troops still well inside France and Belgium. Revolution was brewing in German cities back home. The three major Allied victors squabbled over peace terms, America's idealist president, Woodrow Wilson, opposed an allied invasion of Germany and Austria to occupy both countries and enforce their surrenders. Remember they said an armistice. armistice. Um, So, by the time the formal Versailles Peace Conference began in January of 1919, millions of soldiers had gone home. German politicians and veterans were already blaming their capitulation on stab-in-the-back traitors and spreading the lie that their armies lost only because they ran out of supplies while on the verge of victory in enemy territory. The Allied victors were in disarray. Wilson was idolized when he arrived in France for peace talks in December of 1918 and was hated for being self-righteous when he left six months later. The Treaty of Versailles proved a disaster, at once too harsh and too soft. Its terms were far less punitive than those the victorious Allies would later dictate to Germany after World War II. Earlier, Germany itself had demanded tougher concessions from a defeated France in 1871 and Russia in 1918. In the end, the Allies proved unforgiving to a defeated Germany in the abstract, but not tough enough in the concrete. One one ironic result was that the victorious but exhausted Allies announced to the world that they never wished to go to war again. Meanwhile, the defeated and humiliated Germans seemed all too eager to fight again soon to overturn the verdict of 1918, which we would later come to know as World War II, right? Okay. 
World War I wasn't called World War I. It was called the Great War. It only became World War I when we had World War II. So, all right. And that, uh, hopefully that was kind of informative for some of you that, uh, and some of us, and even myself, that didn't completely understand that. All right, now let me just remind you, before we get started, I'd like to, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. If you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we are streaming live on Facebook. Okay. So I want to remind you that in about 10, 12 minutes, we're going to give away free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They're going to be delivered to your business uh, on Tuesday afternoon. And the number you're going to call then, not now, but then, is 614-459-9769. Okay, so I'd like to give a shout out to all of our veterans today. Thank you for your service. Everything I do today and every day has been made possible by your efforts and the military personnel that came before you. People who put their life on the line and those who gave their life to protect our way of life. Thank you. Thank you. And in loving memory of my deceased father-in-law, George Onisik, who served in the Navy during World War II on the USS Tennessee. And my dad, Louis Kavitko, had such bad vision, unfortunately, they denied him entry into the military, but as a tool and die maker, he helped manufacture the military vehicles that were used in the war. So, um, in memory of those two fine gentlemen. And by the way, we don't know them all, but we owe them all. Remember that. Okay, so I mentioned the gentleman that I did the, I did the 29 uh, extractions. Uh, I did oral sedation. I did IV sedation. We made him an upper and lower immediate denture, which means we put them in immediately after extracting his teeth. And we had done impressions of the remaining teeth and did bite records and shade selection and all that prior. But the first time I got to try them in was after extracting all of his teeth. And at that moment, by the way, he was pretty out of it. Doesn't really, wasn't really aware. I mean, he could open and close if I asked him, but he really wasn't aware. We don't really know if he likes them yet, although I think he will. And so um, let's talk about partial dentures, complete dentures, and why you would do one over the other and how we can avoid them. I will tell you that a lot of uh, military personnel tend to be smokers. They just smoke. I don't know, maybe nervous habit, maybe there's nothing else to do. And smoking definitely, definitely uh, will increase your chance of losing your teeth. It decrease, decreases the blood supply, and then you get periodontal disease. It becomes rampant and you just can't save the teeth. The youngest person I've ever taken all their teeth out uh, was a 27-year-old military personnel. 27 years old, think of that. And I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it because there was no other choice. None, none. All of the teeth were so far gone at age 27. Okay, so now, um, um, obviously, there's this question comes up, why would we extract someone's teeth unless if we, uh, even if we can save some? So. It's always good if you can save some teeth. I said on that young man I couldn't, and I couldn't on this gentleman last Friday. But if you can, even if it's just two teeth, it's better to save because we can make a partial denture that clicks onto those two teeth, and it's so much easier to wear, especially on the lower. Okay? If you have enough teeth on the, lo on the upper to keep, we should do that too, because again, you have something solid. Hopefully they are chewing teeth, so we know exactly where you're supposed to close, where your teeth come together, where your bite it was, and now where it still is. But if we don't have that, we don't have it, and we have ways of making those measurements, and we can do that. Now, why would, So why would you extract someone's teeth, all of them, instead of saving some uh, for making removable partial dentures? If they have severe periodontal disease, I mentioned. If they have severe decay on all of their teeth, if just nothing, nothing is left that we can save. If their teeth are so crooked and you're trying to give them a more attractive smile and they ask us to, I have done this on a young lady, terribly crooked teeth, very rotten, but there were definitely savable teeth. But by the time I took out the ones that couldn't be saved and if I were going to make her a partial, we would still have had to recreate her crooked, crowded look. And it wasn't going to give her the, uh, the look she, went, she was going for. She wanted a nice smile. So we wound up taking all of them out. I wish she could have afforded um, implant-supported uh, bridges or something, but she couldn't. And I'll tell you what, if you were to see the before and after, and I'd be happy to share it with you if anyone wants to send me an email. Uh, you would be amazed. It looks like a smile makeover when all it was was uh, extracting all of her teeth and uh, making her complete dentures. So now, remember though that it's oftentimes cheaper to save some teeth and make a person a partial denture 
uh, than it is to go with the complete because I get this question a lot. Well, how about you just take out all my teeth? People think that's going to be the cheapest and I'll never have to see the dentist again. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, you will have to see the dentist and it will be partly because of the fact that we need to check tissues. We need to look for oral cancer, at least on a yearly basis. Uh, but also the fact that your denture is going to get loose over time because uh, gums and bone aren't designed to be covered and so there's going to be some slow shrinkage which means they will become loose after about two and a half years after you get a new set of dentures you should be thinking about a reline and after uh, another two and a half years so five years out be thinking about new dentures both for their fit and the fact that the teeth wear down and become super flat they don't really chew anymore they just kind of rub so you want to make sure that you have a good chewing ability so you can eat all of the same foods that you are used to eating the healthy foods tend to need more chewing than unhealthy foods. It just is. It just it is, it is that way. Okay, so uh, another advantage of partial dentures is you still have some natural teeth to chew with. So some of your force uh, is going to be natural uh, tooth. And by the way, a full set of dentures is only about 33% as efficient in chewing as natural teeth. So the minute you have dentures, you can only chew about one-third as well, with one-third the strength, that sort of thing. Okay. So, and then let's see, we talked about, okay now, so when is a full denture better than a partial denture? If I uh, talked about if your remaining teeth are crooked or misshapen, or just plain ugly, maybe you don't want braces, but you still want a beautiful smile. Here's a question we get a lot. Can you have a full denture on the lower arch and natural teeth on the upper arch? Seems plausible, right? But the answer is no. You can't do that, or you shouldn't do that because the lower jaw, being just a horseshoe, would be so weakened by the force of upper natural teeth, you would just, you know, very quickly just kind of cause this uh, uh, severe attrition of the lower ridge, and you would regret it. Now, can you have an, a full upper denture? Um, uh, I mean, denture on the upper teeth and natural teeth on the lower arch? Absolutely. So you can do the reverse. You can have a full arch of lower natural teeth up against an upper denture, but you can't have it the other way around. And why is that? Because on the upper you have the full palate. So all of the force isn't on just the outer horseshoe of your ridge. It's on the palate. It's on everything up there. And so it can withstand the rigors of biting against natural lower teeth. Okay. All right. Now, uh, we are, where are we on the time? Okay, you know, we are, we're pretty much uh, caught up as far as our, our show clock, we call it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do Dr. Pivitko's question of the day soon. Let me just make sure I've covered all of the uh, reasons you might want to uh, extract someone's teeth, all of them. Uh, one would be that they have severe periodontal disease. Another would be that they have severe decay of all of their teeth. Another would be if their teeth are very, very crooked, misshapen, or ugly, and they don't want braces, but they want a beautiful smile. Remember that? Because when we do Dr. Kovitko's question of the day, that's going to be important. Before we do the contest, though, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kovitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kovitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's question of the day. All right, so the question of the day is, what are some of the reasons we may extract all of someone's teeth and make them a complete denture? A, if they have severe periodontal disease. B, if they have severe decay on all of their teeth. C, if their teeth are very, very crooked, misshapen, or ugly, and, don't, and they don't want braces but would want a beautiful smile. Or D, all of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. There's nothing else in the world tonight She said people don't take the time Hey, people don't take the time 
Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Gavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Dr. Kavitko, let's go! Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have our caller on the line, and I guess the winner is going to be Leona. Hey, Leona, do you have the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? I do. Good. What is it? Okay. <laughs> the answer is B, all of the above. Awesome, awesome. Hey, are you a veteran? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> um, <laughs> I signed up, I got um, sworn in, and I was very young, I was as young as you could be, I was just out of high school, uh -huh. and my parents were so against it that when I told them I had done that, they spent all their money that they had to get an attorney to get me out of it, oh my because goodness. my dad had been in the, yeah, my dad had been in the Navy for four years and, and loved it, but he just didn't think it was a place for a woman to be, and they were really worried, so um, the, I, I was actually in the service, but okay. they got me out of it. You know, so there was I, I feel kind of bad about that. That's why I didn't want to answer. Oh, no, that's I, I okay. Like that's okay. And you know why? There was a story in the dispatch about a young lady that uh, did the same thing. She enlisted. Her parents were not happy. She went to the mom, went to the uh, recruiting center, and she said, whatever happens to her, happens to you, her, to her recruiter, basically threatened the recruiter. <laughs> and uh, oh, the article was about how she'd been there for 10 years, and um, if her daughter wants to... Uh, go in, she's going to do the same thing to that recruiter if her daughter, when she grows up, happens to want to do the same thing. So it's natural reaction. And um, you yeah. know what? It's hard to say. Maybe they saved you. Yeah, I mean, they did it out of love. And I realized that as I got older, but I was so mad at them because I really wanted to do it. And, um, you know, I was looking forward to it. But yeah. um, instead, I did something else, and I devoted myself to helping other people by becoming a registered nurse. Awesome. Okay. And, yeah. Well, well good so for you. So that, that means you care for yeah. the veterans now. You probably do. I have. Yeah. I have cared for many of them in the past. Okay. I'm, I'm retiring now. Okay. But, um, yeah. Hey, and this is Dr. Kovetko, isn't it? It is. That I'm speaking with? Yes. Well, God bless you, and thank you for doing these wonderful um, uh, podcasts. I love hearing them. I look forward to them. And I thought, you know what? If I won the flowers, I'd really like to give them back to Dr. Kovetko and his staff. Are you kidding? And I thought that'd be really cool to do. I thought about that, and I thought, you know what? I'd love to have flowers because I haven't had flowers in a long time. <laughs> So my first thought was to give them back to you. We'll make sure you get them, but the, the thought was just very awesome that you thought that. Well, so, you're welcome. And I do want to become a patient of yours. Okay. Well, we can do that. Um, I'm I have a friend that is a patient of yours from many years ago. I don't know if he still goes to you. Um, um, Jesus Robledo? I think I remember that name. Tell you what. Oscar. Give my, uh, by Oscar. Give my, my producer's going to give you our office phone number if you're interested when he's gathering your information about getting you the flowers, okay? I will, and again, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. You have a great day, okay? Right. And maybe we'll meet someday. You, you too. You'll see me in the office one day. Definitely. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Leona. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye now. Okay. Well, uh, hey, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode number 565. What a lovely person. That was awesome. I don't think I've ever had such a compliment from a listener on the air, at least. So that's great. I do have people that tell me they listen, and my wife runs into folks the same way. But it's very, very nice to know that you're out there and that you actually listen and that you care. So let's move on with the show. And we're talking about, because it's Veterans Day and how, unfortunately, a lot of veterans wind up needing partials and dentures. And I did one on Friday, a gentleman, I've done several, uh, that I wanted to talk about them. So when you consider 
uh, when would you consider implant-supported prostheses instead of traditional partials or dentures? Okay? When you would do that is when there's just not enough ridge to support. You don't have any teeth, and the ridge for especially a lower is so atrophied that there's just no way you can get a denture to really fit snugly. Well, then we would start thinking about implants. Sometimes the bone has to be built up first. Sometimes there uh, isn't room and in, in the posterior areas, and so we have to keep our implants in the anterior area where the uh, between nerves, because in the back areas there is a nerve that runs back there. But we can always, always find a way. Um, so let's see, what are the reasons you would pick one over the other? Like when would you pick uh, implant supported over traditional parcels or dentures? So traditional parcels, of course, you need to have some natural teeth. Uh, well, you know, that's not even true. We could put a few implants in and then hook parcels to those. I've actually done that. What am I saying? <laughs> and then dentures. Uh, obviously, uh, you, you know, you, you kind of always start, if you're losing all of your teeth, you kind of always start off with dentures anyway because uh, we can't use the implants on day one. At least we shouldn't. I know some offices do it and get away with it. And, and I don't know, you know, I've been told that the histology is against you on that. But so you kind of start off with a denture, uh, even though the implants might be up underneath. And then we're waiting for those implants to uh, heal, for the uh, bone to grow up to them. We call that osseointegration. And so at some point then, uh, the dentures are either taken out and thrown away because you don't need them because now we have the implant-supported version. Or the uh, dentures are altered to have little snaps on them if you're doing uh, like an implant-supported denture. Okay, it's still a denture, it's still all plastic and everything, but it snaps into these little clips, these little snaps, okay? Um, and then um, one reason, or what are the reasons you would pick one over the other? To be honest, if you can have, I mean, if you can have a row of full-size individual implants, one per missing tooth, and have uh, crowns on those, that would be awesome. The reality is, is that usually is uh, more expensive than people either can afford or want to spend. Now, you could do a series of implant-supported bridges, and that saves the cost of the number of implants you have to pay for, and then make um, bridge work that is, again, looks and feels like natural teeth because there's nothing covering your palate. That is the second most expensive approach, I guess. Then you could do what is called an all-on-four hybrid prosthesis, which means we put four implants in an arch, and then we make something that looks like a removable partial denture framework that is made out of titanium, it's metal. And then on top of that, porcelain teeth are baked, a full arch of them, even though you only have four implants uh, kind of towards the front, you wind up with a full set of teeth because they're all attached to this uh, titanium bar. That's a hybrid prosthesis. So that would be the uh, third most expensive approach. Then you could do uh, oh, you know what? I just saw, I'm looking at the time. How about I save a couple of these for after the break because I'm going to run myself long if I don't. <laughs> You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, ep episode number 565. It happens to be Veterans Day unless you listen to this on repeat. And we'll be right back. You can't take me as I am Not just a little bit I don't know who to be I'm a paper cup, baby you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Greiger. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Hi, 
All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode number 565. We're honoring veterans on Veteran Day, be- Veterans Day because it's November 11th, 2018. And for those of you that maybe weren't tuned in, uh, the reason we celebrated on November 11th is because World War I ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month 100 years ago. 1918, and it was called Armistice Day because they just reached an armistice. An armistice. I keep saying that wrong. I don't think there's a T at the end. (laughs) Or coffee either, for that matter. (laughs) Okay, so what we've been doing is talking about some of the things that veterans seem to face, which is the fact that they've lost several teeth. Uh, Sometimes they have to lose all of their teeth. And so what are the options and uh, how can we help them out? So we were talking about by order of most expensive, a row of full-size individual implants, one per missing tooth, a series of implant-supported bridges where we save some the cost of some implants by skipping every other one, um, an all-on-four hybrid prosthesis was the next one, uh, where four implants are placed in each arch and a uh, metal framework with porcelain teeth over top, and then we were into the next one, which is what I said I'd save for this after the break time. And it's an implant-supported anterior bridge. So I've done this on a couple occasions where I put just a person had no teeth. Well, they did, but I had to take them all out. And then I made her a temporary denture. And then I put uh, implants where the cuspid teeth had been, the upper cuspids. I let those heal. And then once the implants were ready, I put a bridge that went from one to the other. So all of her front teeth, the whole front smile, was beautiful, right? And it was all implant-supported bridge. And they had little rings on the back. And on the back... On those rings were these little, uh, I had a removable partial denture we made for her that snapped into those rings. So why is that cool? Because when she takes her partial out, at least her smile is still there. You know, when you go to the hospital and you see nurses like Leona, uh, at least you still have something to smile with because that's uh, fixed in there. It's fixed in there. Okay. Then the next uh, implant supported option that is uh, the lesser expensive version, probably the least expensive version if you're using implants, is mini implant supported upper or lower denture. Now the mini implants primarily are for use on the lower arch because the lower bone is so much more solid and these implants are only 1.8 millimeters in diameter. Uh, But they do make somewhat small implants, not minis, but small implants that we can use for the same purpose on the upper arch. Something in the neighborhood of 2.8 or 3.3 millimeters in diameter would work. Okay, so the pros and cons of each. So why would you go with a single row? If you can afford that, that's the best because you can floss right between them. Uh, You're only asking one implant to do the work of one tooth. If you are doing the series of implant supported bridges, well, uh, you can floss between each bridge, but you have to floss underneath uh, the middle tooth on each bridge. Okay, you can you can floss between bridges, but you can't floss um, easily under a bridge unless you thread the floss under there with a floss threader. Now, the all-on-four hybrid prosthesis, um, you know, you do have to have those taken out maybe once a year and cleaned underneath because food particles and stuff can grow under there and can actually affect your implants. Um, That would be a downside for that. And um, let's see, for the uh, implant-supported anterior bridges and the removable parcels, um, the only thing I can think of on that is those little snaps can wear out, but we have replacement snaps to make them tight again. And then the mini implant-supported upper and lower Here's the thing with those, you are going to still have to take your dentures because they're dentures. You're going to have to take them out at night and you're going to have these four little pegs uh, showing, sticking up out of your gum, top and bottom. Not that anyone in the room is going to see it, but you'll see it in something that your tongue can play with. It's not exactly all that uh, uh, great to look at, Um, whereas when you take your denture out, you just have bald gums, you know, but one that has many implants there, you have those four little uh, pegs or posts sticking up. Okay. So uh, let's see, the challenges that you would face when um, wearing, say, mini implants. Uh, you're still going to get food under there. Sometimes they're hard to get out of your mouth. That was something that one of my patients complained about after I made him a, I took his lower denture that he could not even wear, could not even keep it in his mouth. And I made it so it took him two hands and about 20 seconds to get out because he was like pulling, 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 and it took about 20 seconds. It seemed to him like uh, an eternity, and he just complained that he couldn't get him out. And, in fact, he could get them out. It just felt like they should be easier to come in and out. And uh, I felt like um, maybe we shouldn't be loosening them because that's why we made them in the first place. But anyway, 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's looking like I'm out of time. And uh, again, thank you to all of the veterans out there and uh, remembering all of those that um, are no longer with us. And remember what we said at the beginning. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. Okay, that's all the time we have. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kvitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. Remember, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1 urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 